on the Formula E pre circuit. And I've got a rush because I've got endurance Aston Martin works driver Darren Turner about to pick me up in the Aston Martin Rapid E. And I'm gonna go for a hot lap before the Formula E starts. And it's all a bit rushed. This is Aston's first full production electric car. The first of several to come. I don't think the pressure of the crowd watching me more than anything. I'm not even driving. Bye right, guys. Wish me luck. You won't need luck. <laughs> well, I, I need not. your skill, Darren. I've got to learn the circuit. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. I'm here in a place where people come to enjoy life and tax evasion. It's Monaco, it's a beautiful place. It is an escape from reality and I am here to drive a car that is a bit of an escape from reality for many people. I'm gonna be traveling in Aston Martin's first fully electric car, the Rapide, the four-door. Now for a lot of fully charged viewers you might think, who cares, it's not relatable, it's, it's fantasy. Yes and no, because I would argue to you as soon as cars of this level, of this luxury, come into production and manufacturers like Aston Martin invest in cars like this, it has a massive halo effect on the EV world, on the, on the, the attitudes towards plug-ins. It's going to be short and sharp and then I'll get a good walk and look around the car in more detail afterwards. So we are on the street circuit of Monaco in Aston's Rapid E. This is 600 and a bit horsepower. The high voltage aspect of the car has been developed with Williams. I'm concentrating on where we're going because this is, this is seriously quick and exciting. And it's a short, sharp lap. And because it's the Formula E event that's going to start in about an hour, we're allowed to just go out for a quick squirt with Darren here and I'm going to chat to Darren in a bit more detail after he's finished pushing this luxury four-door to its limit with arm cones just a couple of metres away okay we're coming in Ooh. it was quick and that was smooth cheers Johnny I'll speak to you in a bit yeah Ooh. well that was a hot lap two laps didn't have a great deal of time to talk to Darren I'll talk to him again in a minute when he's done a couple more drives because we're under tight uh, time constraint by the FIA because the Formula E Pre starts here in an hour. That was all a bit of a rush. I'm now going to go and look at the car in a bit more detail, talk to the people about how it was developed and all of the spec. That was the safety car. At the heart of Aston's plug-in cars is this man here, John Caress. John's the vehicle line director, which I don't entirely know what that means, if I'm honest, John. Um, what does it mean? Uh, what, what that means, uh, Johnny, is I'm, I've got the accountability and responsibility for making, delivering the car. Okay. We have lots, cross-functionally across Aston Martin, many, many contributors to make this actually happen. My job is to, uh, to ensure that happens, quality, cost and time and is befitting of what we need for the business. So our base car is the Rapide AMR, our uh, racing inspired uh, Rapide, yep. uh, the ultimate. So we've taken the suspension system off that car, we've taken uh, some of the styling elements yep. and we've, we've augmented that and turned that up to 11 basically with an electric drivetrain. But yep. today is about showing on the track dynamically for the first time ever what the car can do. Hey, this is 600 and a bit horsepower. It's making some crazy noises. It sounds like um, R2-D2. <laughs> so I bet you as soon as you lift this bonnet, people will swarm around you like, wow, 
It's a big car. So the car's on charge at the moment. There you can probably hear the fans okay. going. So that's the cooling. So this is the cooling matrix here that we have. Yeah. Rear wheel drive only. Yeah. Two rear drive motors from integral powertrain. Yeah. Over 950 newton meters. Highest torque of any Aston Martin ever. Wow. Higher There's been than, some torque Higher than Valkyrie. Wow. This is a pre-production validation prototype that you can see here that we're showing to the world. So we've utilized existing chassis. We've used the majority of the body that you see on a repeat with this project. Because you're saying this is the swan song of this car, which will then lead on to yeah. the fully electric Lagonda series. Absolutely. So which is only going to be electric. Only electric. Don't you like these wheels? These wheels are incredible. They are uh, feature forged aluminium. Right, okay. With machining. So That's we call so this sexy. negative negative diamond turning. If you feel behind, you can feel pocketing. So oh, this it's is a lightweight and exercise. That is thin. The Rapide is a pretty cool car. You know, it's, yeah, it, it, it doesn't even look like a four door. It's sort of all blended in nicely. So as we come down here, uh, 65 kilowatt, 64 uh, kilowatt, uh, hour kilowatt hours, hours, yeah. We were constrained really in terms of the package of the car that we had. I didn't want to encroach into the uh, occupant area at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, so and floor pan is standard. Floor pan is standard and it's a sports car, it's a sports yeah. GT car, four door. And that low H point of where you sit is, yeah. is so important to give you that dynamic feeling. If we wanted to put batteries under the floor, that, that would just raise all that up and I'd end up being different proportions and change lots of things and yeah. it's, it's no longer an Aston Martin. Then. You come around the back and this is this is my, one of my favourite parts of an Aston, the, the arse of an Aston, it's brilliant. <laughs> this is where our 800 volt inverter is. So this is the first time in public a production 800 volt electrical architecture car has been seen. Is it? Yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. And we took that decision to give us quicker charging yep. gave us more mass efficiency. Is the tech spec of this car finalised yet? In terms of absolute numbers of range and we have indicative targets yep. and we're achieving those from a simulation point of view. 155 miles an hour, yep. 0 to 60 in less than four seconds, yep. more than 200 miles on the WLTP cycle. We can charge in about three and a half, three hours. Okay. On a 22 kilowatt AC, okay, DC, right. 35 minutes on 100 kilowatts. Is that C CCS or yes, yeah, CCS? Yeah. Yep. And there's elements of carbon fibre and light weighting that we've done on the interior. Yeah. Um, as well as some other underbody elements as well to 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 minimise the mass impact of the battery. Car. Flat floor. Yeah. yeah. Again, aerodynamically driven. Different cooling requirements. I don't have exhaust system to worry about. No. Well, now that's got, weight as well, an exhaust it system. It is weight, absolutely. You'll get it under four, well under four seconds to 62. I know you yeah. will. Like all Astons, rear drive. Rear drive. Twin motors. Twin motors from integral powertrain. A British built motors. British built motors. Yeah. Mechanical limited slip differential. It has. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's a transfer drive. Love, love an Aston Martin handle. Look. Frameless doors. Yep. And they, what would you call that when they open at a bit of an angle? Swan neck hinge. Swan neck hinge. Just course. like we had with the uh, fuel filler flap. Yeah, yeah. So this is over 700 pounds feet of torque in this thing. Obviously this is Aston Martin's four door car. They're gonna make 155 of these all made in Aston's new facility in Wales. British brand, British construction. This isn't anywhere near the final calibration software yeah. of what it will look like, but we have a new 10 inch LCD screen. So obviously with an EV car, we need to display different units. You've got a damping button here. This is presumably. Yeah. So we have three stage adaptive damping. Yeah. Uh, like the core car does. And we, you'll notice a sport button there. I do. Um, as well. Nice so again, S. we've got the three modes, uh, normal sport and sport plus. Yeah. And uh, we have a traction button here. Oh. as well. Oh, that's nice So to we see. still have like a traction off. <laughs> and off means off? Off means off. I mean, Astons have always been known for their amazing balance for a front engine car. You know, they've always had a big engine up there. 
It's still a, the, what is it, 50? We're about 50-50, might be a little bit rear biased, okay. just like 51-49 to the front. Have you had any orders from, a, from people here in the last 48 hours? There's, there has been orders, yes. Real facts, look, real facts. <laughs> so when I went out with Darren today, earlier, was I experiencing full power? Unfortunately not. Oh, that is a sad news to hear. You were, what was you, I you were only experiencing about 75%. Was it only 75? It's ironic that you're a multi uh, champion endurance racer, and this is not really endurance, is it? This is actually a really small lap. But tight. Wow, we are flying. I've actually never done a hot lap of Monaco in my life. It does feel weird going around a hairpin looking at boats. How does it feel to you? I've got some uh, radio noise going on. Oh, okay. okay. I won't talk to you then. You just do what you do best. I think the big message to bear in mind here is where we are in Monaco, this strange principality hanging on the edge of a cliff, very dense, very beautiful. These streets don't lend themselves to big cars. These streets don't lend themselves to petrol power or diesel power. But you see, there's a lot of wealthy people here that like to spend their money. There's nothing wrong with that. But they want interesting products to buy with their money. So electric luxury goods can't come soon enough, I don't think. I don't own a boat, sadly. I wish I did. Never mind. Darren, so you're affiliated with Aston Martin. You've won a few races in Aston Martins, right? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, I've got a couple under my belt. You've got a few in your belt. Endurance racing is your speciality. Yep, we've won them one three times. That's yeah, you know, as a career highlight. That's for me personally. That's that's huge. But to do it with Aston Martin was was fantastic. Yeah. When was the first time you drove this? About three weeks ago. I come into this whole EV world with a sort of blank canvas because I've never driven one before. Haven't so, you? Yeah, that was a real eye opener for me the first well, time. Go on then. Run, Tell me, how did it feel? Well, I knew it wasn't going to have any sort of engine noise. The thing was, I was expecting it to be quite low in performance. Everyone I've spoken to who has driven EV before has said, you know, it's got a lot of torque, it's really punchy and everything else. I still sort of went, really? But is it though? Can it be? Yeah. And I have to say, after the first lap, I came in and I was, I was pretty blown away. You know, the performance is there where you would normally pick up a throttle in a uh, yeah, V12, V8 or whatever, internal combustion engine, you know, there's, there's a bit of a delay and it sort of builds up yeah. with the performance. Where yeah. this was like, you're there, straight away, it's on. It's, you've got the performance. And yeah. the, my initial thing was, actually, it's too much for me. Can we sort of dampen down the, too severe. the too... throttle response? And, you know, yeah. they're working on it and it's something that they're, they've improved already from the first day I had it to the second day. So yeah. now we've come here to Monaco it's my first time driving around the circuit other than being in a sim. Generally, like the race cars, there's so much noise in the car yeah, there is. that it's really hard to even hear when the engineers get on the, on the radio. Really? This was the opposite, as yeah. in all the noise was what I could hear through the phone system, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you tried to talk to me I tried once. to talk to you and you were a bit like, I, I've got I, too much I, going I on. I can't hear, sort of yeah. thing. And that was it. And so it is different having no engine noise. Yeah because engine RPM plays a big part in the driving experience, especially on a racetrack. Yeah. So all that's been removed, and they're your cues for where to brake. Quite often you use them. You use bumps or you use markers on the track, but yeah. quite often yeah. it can be engine RPM. Uh, shift you, lights. Shift lights, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that's, that's gone. All gone. So your yeah. references are changed. But it didn't take long to adjust. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's something that becomes very natural really quickly. Take away the, the you know electrification yeah. and just think car balance, braking, turning, accelerating, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. I was impressed. Now yeah. off camera we were, we'd started to talk about commuting. Yeah. Car, cars you commute in and all that. So I would go electric for yeah. my everyday Which is car. when you use most of your fuel. Yeah. In fact now that I've had this experience, yeah. I'm even Is it sort of wet your appetite a bit yeah. more? Yeah. yeah. I, I can't see you as being a one car man. De definitely not. I'm okay. a van man. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah, so I've got, well, a combi VW. A Throw everything bus. in, bikes, whatever we want to go, yeah. get the kids in, and off we go. Well, so a full EV one of them is coming, 2021. Yeah. 20, yeah, so hopefully the range will be enough to get to Cornwall and back. That would be the Definitely thing. down there. Yeah. Well, then when you're there, you can charge all day. <laughs> well, so, yeah, so exactly. no, no problem, is it? Yeah. But, you know, the, with the, the Rapid E, it's, 
it, it's going to give everything that someone wants for this type of car, isn't it? It's going to have the range, it's yeah. got the, the performance, uh, and obviously the luxury as well that comes with an Aston Martin. So. Yeah. I'm, don't sure, I'm not sure they'll let me have one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I might ask, I'll say, I'm really keen to go. It's just family, electric. Family orientated. Exactly. Yeah. Four door. Yeah. Hatchback. Tow bar on the back. Tow bar. Happy days. In the future, are we going to see a potential endurance electric Aston, I wonder? At Le Mans, there's always one garage reserved for something different. Yeah, there is. And so maybe that could be the introduction. So. Well, Le Mans embraced um, hybridisation before a lot of other yeah. people. Yeah. They've and done that, some that's really proved very stuff. successful, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's trickled down into real passenger cars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I can see it, I can see it. You know, like when Formula E started, yeah. I was like, really? Is that, is that gonna be exciting? Is that gonna be a thing? Yeah, yeah. I can't see it going past year one. And yeah. look at it now, it's growing and growing and the more manufacturers are getting involved. Best way to, to advance is to have competition and yeah. that's certainly what Formula E is about. The racing has to be great to get people to come along, to see it in reality, yeah. and then they will appreciate there isn't noise, but you hear different things. You know, that aspect yeah, of it. Yeah. And, you know, I've had a chance to go out to a couple of corners and see the cars. And I have to say, the racing's pretty, pretty magic. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Hey, I know you're a busy man you. today. Enjoying, Just get ready for the next run. Enjoying the, yeah, you're going to go out again? We're getting the whole wrap Yeah, up. yeah, sorry. Got to go. I'm Come going, on. I'm going. I'm going, that's it. See you later. We are literally going, yeah? OK, all right. Where's my helmet? You know, as the uh, beautiful people are leaving the event in their VIP water taxis, it makes me think it's very easy to scoff at expensive luxury goods being pointless. But you're perfectly entitled to buy anything you want, and if you can afford to buy it, some people out there want the best, they want exclusivity. And that's where this Aston Martin comes in. It's a limited edition car, it's highly exclusive. Don't scoff at the fact that it's it's expensive and it's a token EV, because I don't think it is token. Like they've said, it's a swan song of an older model being electrified, which then moves on to Aston's next chapter, the Lagonda brand, which is only going to be electric and it's gonna be highly luxury. And it sends out a really good message, doesn't it? If you live in a place like this, which is full of congestion, but an awful lot of wealth, and you want something extra special, and maybe you're feeling the environmental responsibility, or maybe you just realize you're sitting in traffic most of the time, and you just want something that's a bit more appropriate, suddenly, something like that Rapid E makes sense. As usual, thank you very much for watching Fully Charged. If you haven't subscribed yet, smash the subscribe button, as the kids would say. If you like the video, tell us, tell us what you think, and patrons, I say it every time, and I really mean it, without you, we could not make videos like this, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you.